Hello and welcome. This is James at the DSO Imager Channel. And uh, today we're going to go over a reprocess of a very uh, challenging target. Uh, the target is CTB1, also known as the Medulla Nebula. Now I collected data on this target uh, about a year ago, October and November last year. I collected over 94 hours of data on this target. It's, it's so faint and I was not happy with uh, the results uh, that I got. So I just kind of shelved that data. And uh, then early this year, I had found out that uh, Joe and Glenn from Joe's Astrophoto and Astrobloke, they had been collecting data on this target. And um, I offered to contribute my data to their uh, collaboration. And um, uh, they were able to put out uh, a nice image that used all three of our data and um, it was a fantastic image over 200 hours uh, on that target so going back to my own data I had captured it with an ASI 1600 monochrome, uh, monochrome camera and a little 70 millimeter refractor the stellar view SV 70t and I felt like at the time that maybe this target was just too dim for uh, for that combination. I posted a video uh, of me processing this image, which you see right here. This is the, this is the, um, uh, the show combination. Uh, and you can see the challenges that I had with that target. Um, that video is titled, um, When 94 Hours of Exposure Isn't Enough. <laughs> so, you know, maybe 94 hours was enough. When it comes to astrophotography, we live in exciting times now because the technology uh, is is advancing. We have new cameras coming out all the time, and we have new software coming out all the time. And in this case specifically, what I'm talking about is Star Exterminator. So Star Exterminator was available when I first processed this image earlier in the year, uh, but it's come a long way since uh, since its release, and it has done such an impressive job that it's forcing me to revisit a lot of my older uh, older data and that's what this video is about today is basically how Star Exterminator plus my own uh, uh, improvement in my own uh, techniques have allowed me to go back and salvage this data and produce a, a really cool looking image okay so anyway I went back went back over the data uh, I did restack the data early last year after I published that video and uh, had trimmed some subs. So the, the count for this image is 91 hours and 30 minutes. And I'm not going to go over too much in the detail. If you want to see some of the raw stuff, um, you can check out that other video. Uh, but what's interesting is that I didn't spend a lot of time on this either. It was a very quick, straightforward process. And so, anyway, this is what we started off with. So, ran uh, dynamic background extraction and uh, just used channel combination, did the standard show palette, and uh, we ended up with, with this image here. Now I took this image, I ran color calibration on it, and I ran dynamic background extraction on it one more time. And... Uh, this is what we have. Now this is not stretched yet, right? This is uh, still in the linear state. And now I'm just going to tap through. Now if you've seen some of my other videos, you know that there's a whole collection of masks and stuff that uh, you usually see on this right hand side of different uh, things I use to process the image. And for this image, you notice, I mean, I got a couple masks in there, but I mean, this is, um, I didn't actually have to do a lot on this one. Uh, so there's a first step. Uh, with the stars out and previously 10 months ago it, I was left with a blotchy image because the um, you could see where the stars were removed but this time uh, Star Exterminator did a much better job the uh, version of Star Exterminator that I'm using is I believe it's uh, 11 yeah AI version 11 and this is what I, ch I check generate star image and I check unscreen stars and so anyway uh, I did this, and I thought, okay, yeah, I think I think I have uh, this has some uh, some potential here, a lot better than uh, last time. 
And so here's a stretch. And um, I think I just use the auto stretch actually after I get in the stars out. And yeah, I, mostly curves work. You can see the mask. I'll clear this mask. Right now, I've gotten better. I feel like, well, I don't know if I'd say better, but my my um, uh, work with color is is changed a little bit over the past several months. And, uh, and <laughs> this may come as a shock to some people, but I think I was leaving too much green in the image. Now, I still like green. I think green uh, is a great uh, transition to other colors. So I don't want a two-toned image. Uh, and so you can see that as I click through this, I'm, I'm leaving little hints of green in some of these brighter areas. But I mean, I mean that was it. it. Just just some curves work, some light mask work. There wasn't a whole lot of uh, effort that went into uh, doing this uh, reprocess. Now I made a clone of this and I tweaked it a little bit more, and so that's what we have here. A little bit better contrast. Now there's no noise reduction on this yet, so it does does appear a little grainy. Uh, but you know nothing star, uh, nothing noise exterminator can take care of. Uh, so let's look at the stars really quick. And here they go. Now, I know there's uh, some recent tools and scripts out there for stars. Uh, and I confess, I still have to uh, take the time to look at those. But what I've been doing with stars lately is, is so simple and, and it works that I've not been too motivated to check out some of these other me methods. Uh, so these are the stars from the, from the unstretched image. And I just do an arc sign stretch. So you see a preview here. So what I'm doing with the preview is doing a test stretch to see how it's coming out first. But anyway, I'll I'll step through the uh, step through the changes here. So you can see it's always a, a balance of how many stars you want visible uh, because I mean there's a lot of structure in here. And if we go back to the original image, I mean, you can't see anything hardly because there's so many stars and the stars are so huge uh, that they completely uh, uh, block out. That's that's the advantage you get from um, uh, being able to uh, stretch the stars uh, from linear uh, separately. All right, so we got to this point and then it's uh, inverting to take care of the purple. Uh, and then, yeah, I mean, this is where, where we ended up with, and I combined them, and here's a combined shot. Now, as usual, I take the image into uh, Photoshop after this, and I tweak uh, contrast a little bit more, and I tweak the colors a little bit, and then I bring it back into... Um, Pix in sight, and I apply noise reduction with um, noise exterminator. So let's uh, just take a quick final look at the comparison. So, as a reference, here's the original image that I processed 10 months ago, and that's what I came up with this time around. You know, so stars are a little bit of a controversial thing. Uh, whether you should have them or you go starless. A lot of people like starless. A lot of people like to have their stars. I think what I've done here is found the, the balance between a starless image and an image that's just completely obscured with stars. So we've got plenty of stars in there. I mean, not as many because I didn't stretch the stars as, as much as they were stretched in the original image. Uh, but the star size is well under control, and we can actually see uh, all this nebulosity behind the stars. And so what I think, what I take away from this is that uh, it does highlight the importance of, of uh, acquiring good quality data because if you're, pro especially if you're starting out, if your processing skills are not going to be there because it takes some time and, and experience to uh, develop that. Uh, but if your data is of good quality, then when your skills improve and when there's new software out there like Star Exterminator, you can always go back and revisit the data that you captured. So the quality of this uh, data that I had captured last year with that 70 millimeter scope 
was actually pretty decent. And it just took a combination of new software and, and a better eye on my part when, in terms of processing to really uh, take full advantage of the data that I had captured. And so for those of us that are just starting out now, uh, you know, it's, it, it can be a, a challenging uh, t to have the patience for it, but really focus on the rig and the, the, the quality of data that you're capturing with calibration files and, and everything. Just make the data as good as possible. That way, when your skills are, are better, you can, uh, you can really put together a nice image. And Star Exterminator is an example of a program that's forced me to uh, go back and reprocess a lot of my images. Uh, I've been on a reprocessing kick. If you follow me on Astrobin, uh, my link is in my um, YouTube channel uh, banner page on the lower right. Uh, you know that I've been reprocessing a lot of my images lately. And I actually have another example of that here. Uh, so this is a shot of the Wizard Nebula that I took. Same scope, same setup, same filters. Uh, I don't remember how much time was on this. It was a lot, though. I want to say like 30 hours or something like that. And, I mean, same kind of scenario here, right? I mean, there's so many stars that it's obscuring a lot, and it's taking away. And that was the reprocess that I did recently. And so we can see a lot more. And of course, you can see the change in my taste and color. Maybe I took out too much green, but I felt like I have some green over here. So <laughs> so green still being represented. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, that's all I got uh, to share today. So uh, go ahead and drop a comment down there on your thoughts on reprocessing data and uh, you know the impact of programs like Star Exterminator. And... Um, let me know what you guys think of these re-edits. Do you prefer the original versions? Do you think the new versions are better? Uh, if you're not subscribed to this channel, please go ahead and sub subscribe. Uh, give the video a like. And uh, clear skies.